Tackle the shackles. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Taco the Shackles Out for Life streaming live podcast. This is your host of the most high God, Lee Robbins. Hey, it's the day that the Lord has made. It's an afternoon that the Lord has made. It was this morning that the Lord has made. But we're still here. What would be the God? The dog didn't take us out. That means we got stuff to play them for. Hey, I was passing by graveyards. Today I passed by graveyards and passing by those graveyards. I was thankful. I was grateful just to be here. We're tackling some shackles and we're giving God the praise. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory be to God. I want to bring up my co hosts CJ, call Jamal. Come on up, buddy. Dr. Lee Robbins, how you doing tonight, brother? Oh, it's all like a neck bone dip in Texas chili. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right, oh, man, I'm telling you, it's on, it's on. What you been up to? Man, listen, it's your birthday. Today is my birthday, yes, sir. 31 today. Praise God. 31 today. Yep, yep, yep. They, they told me I wasn't going to make it past 18, so and here I am, so I'm, I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. Uh, don't you like proving those folk that, those negative folk, that, that even the devil tells you, you ain't going to be nowhere. You love, you love proving them wrong, don't you? And if you keep God. on the Lord's plan, man, God got a plan for you. Yeah, yes. And no man can pluck you out of his plan like nobody can pluck you out of his hand. <laughs> That's what's up. I started to preach the message about the hand of God. The hand of God. Being in the hand of God. All this stuff that's going on that's, that's not stable. Uncertainties. All the stuff that's happening. All we got to be concerned of is being in the hand of God. That's where I want to be. That's right. Yo. Come on. Come on. Praise God. Well, man, listen. I hope you enjoy your birthday and... Uh, and that thank you for making a sacrifice to be with us today. I uh, appreciate your presence, brother. Yeah, I'm excited, I'm excited for the show tonight, man. It's going to be a good uh, good conversation, man. I'm excited. Hey, man, we got a young man that's coming on uh, tonight, Mr. Asa. He's coming on. And uh, in fact, let's bring him up to give just an intro. Uh, just the intro. What's going on? Hey, how we doing? <laughs> Man, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, you know it's all about you tonight with Jesus, right? Yeah, it's not all about me, man. It's all about God. That's all it's about, too. <laughs> That's right. Hey, I told him I already like him already. Look at look at his uh, his uh, title there. <laughs> what? Well, that was the plan. <laughs> we didn't even plan that. Wouldn't be, but no. Look at that. Ain't that artist of the most high? That's awesome, brother. We serve the same God. Most definitely. <laughs> you know that guy right there, CJ, right? Yeah. yeah. I know CJ very well. Awesome. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, man. That's the guy, man. That's the man right there, man. Awesome. I like that, like that backdrop back there, man. The, uh, Yo, I'm in the lab, man. What you talking about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, boy. I would say, very creative. He's in the king's chair. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Hey, we gotta give we gotta give at least Ronson a shout out. He's out there. We gotta give him a shout out, Ronson. At you to come on this show. Ronson is your friend, right? Mr. Griffin out there. That's my boy. That's my life coach. That's my friend. Yeah, that's my brother in Christ. It's you know what I'm saying? I, I love Ronson. That's my dog, man. <laughs> oh man, that Ronson is all that in a bag of chips, man. I appreciate him. And he's already, man, doing the right thing because you know when you find where the water is, you like to have other people that you know that's thirsty and uh, and bring the water to them. And uh, Ronson is very good at taking the water to his friends and 
and say, hey, listen, there's some there's some uh, water over here. There's some there's something happening over here. Ronson is very good at that. And so he thinks about his friends and family. That's what's up. All right. Man, thank you, man. We, we're looking forward to hearing your interview, hearing uh, about your life. And uh, in fact, I want to encourage everybody to go and encourage other people to come. They listen to this powerful story that we get ready to hear in just a moment. So we'll, we'll see you in just a little bit, Brother Asa. And we're going to play some videos. We'll see you in just a moment. All right. That's what's up. Check this out. This is what it's all about after the shower. In the U.S., a staggering 2.2 million people are incarcerated. A 500% increase over the past 30 years. One in four prisoners were foster children. One in 28 American children has a parent behind bars. A public defender will routinely have a caseload of more than 100 clients at a time. States spend $2.8 billion annually to incarcerate people for non-criminal rule violations. More than 10% of the incarcerated in the U.S. are veterans, while less than 1% of our citizens serve. More than half are there due to PTSD and substance abuse. Veterans are losing their freedom because of defending ours. Tackle the Shackles, a mega movement to create culture change. Not just inside courtrooms and prisons, but within society. Organizations, activists, and legislators are struggling to pass laws to reform the broken justice and prison systems. This is primarily because the public either doesn't know or doesn't care about the injustices and suffering of those caught up in these systems. The key to success is to make it trendy to be informed and care about our incarcerated citizens. Tackle the Shackles is a national community coalition between athletes, churches, police, service providers, prisons, legislators, and the public to bring about better second chances and reduce recidivism. The coalition also promotes criminal justice and prison reform to ensure fairness in courtrooms, reasonable sentences, and that prison time is rehabilitative instead of punitive. As our country is struggling to find answers to the shackles, issues of inequality, racism, and injustice, it is an ideal and critical time to implement the tackles. Real solutions and reform. Tackle the Shackles is the movement to unify our country and educate about the depth of the criminal justice issues as we reveal and implement solutions. Tackle the Shackles. Oh, yeah. Tackle the Shackles, baby. Live streaming broadcast tonight with our amazing special guest, Asa. My pastor gets back on here. Yes, sir. Yo. All right. Well, praise God. Did y'all hear me? I'm just going to say, keep on going. That was <laughs> awesome, man. Is it clear? Is my uh, screen clear? Everything is going good? Oh, yeah. We good to go, Pastor. Yep. We good to go. We're good to go. Awesome. Awesome. We had a little technical difficulties there just a moment with some streaming. And we may continue to have some, but I got a co-host that can pick it up from there. And we got to encourage our guests to just keep going, even if even if I, I wrapped her early. No, don't do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, go ahead. If you rapture, if you rapture early, that's that's bad news for us, brother. So. <laughs> that's why I said I don't want to do that. <laughs> Where you going, brother? Yeah, yeah. Well, man, I I, I want to go with the rest of the group, man. I I don't want to leave nobody behind. Praise God. Well, listen, I'm gonna give you the honors of of uh, introducing our guests here, an official introduction. 
Uh, why don't you give him uh, in an introduction and then we'll we'll go from there. Why don't you take it from there? Yeah, and this is the brother that, you know, I've been talking with pretty frequently the last few weeks. And uh, his uh, his name as an artist, I mean, it speaks for himself, man. He's, you know, he's definitely a, a very innovative, creative out here. Um, and I'm blessed to, to have met him and um, to be walking alongside him. Um, but his Aza, his, uh, his, his AKA Ace Dillinger, he was given that name during his prison time and the nickname stuck with him throughout his life and his career as an artist. Asa enjoys each day as a gift given by God. His name was given to him by God long before he was ever even thought of. And while in his mother's womb, he has been dedicated to the Lord's work. Only recently has the words Jeremiah have become so clear for him. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and anointed you as my prophet to the nations. Asa is now 36 years old and lives in Waycross, Georgia. He was recently released from prison after doing two years, just like Joseph, for probation re revocation. But just like Joseph, our Lord and Savior used those two years to refine him into a vessel that he can use for his will. The process was a very intense and rigorous training period that has molded Asa into a spiritual soldier who is ready for battle with the enemy. His past troubles, some including drug addiction, gang affiliation, much struggles of conflict and strife are now removed. It made him the person he is today through grace by faith. His past is no longer on his list of regrets. Now it is a testament to the power of Jesus Christ. Please yes. welcome our guest. Come on, everybody. Yeah. Welcome, brother. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Everybody, you guys want to uh, definitely welcome him uh here in the chat we appreciate your chats there we appreciate your presence in fact once y'all go and read chat uh, invite some people to come out and uh and uh, amen we we want them to not miss this testimony awesome 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 well mr asa what's going on with you mm, another day another day man just uh i mean uh all day today i've been working on some music and uh and I, i've had a buddy over here and and we've just you know been in the word and been just thriving in the spirit and just enjoying ourselves today but mm -hmm. um you know no no wait 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 a minute. did you just say you working on some music did you just say you working on some music let's see what you already worked on let's <laughs> see what you already done listen to this check this out Give you all these so we don't have to die. I'm ready to ride wherever I go. Yo, by my side, I give you my life. You 
gave me yours, so I'ma give you mine. It's do or die, Lord, you and I. You paid the way, so I get this right. Wall by faith, side by sight. Show me your strength, I'm in this fight. <laughs> Lord, give me your strength, I'm in this fight. So I walk by faith and not by sight. <laughs> A little bit later on, are you going out, man? This is coming in, man. That is smooth. That is kicking. Wow. Tell me. Go ahead. Go ahead, my brother. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, don't ever let them tell you that white boys can't rap because that. that I'm thing, trying to tell you. That thing hit me, my boy. Hey, that is God working through me. That's all it is. You know what I'm saying? I just. I, I'm a vessel, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm a conduit. I feel like maybe, uh, maybe I'm just like supercharged conduit, like maybe copper or something instead of silver, yeah, or, or aluminum. I, <laughs> he works through me, man. He gives me the words, and I put them, I put them down, and I, you, you gave me the beats. You know? <laughs> so like, yeah. Shout, shout, shout out Jay Booski real quick too, because that's uh, that, that's uh, that's my brother's beat too. So shout out Jay Booski. Yeah, awesome, man. That is so cool. Well, man, continue, man. I just want to interrupt you with some of your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> <You're not. laughs> um, where do I begin? Let's. I mean, the story of me. Okay, uh, it started out. I, I was raised in a Christian family. Uh, my mom, she, and, and she's watching right now. I love you, mama. Uh, my mom, she was a Sunday school teacher, a praise and worship leader. You know, and my father, he was a pastor. Um, my grandparents were in the ministry. They were evangelists. And I was raised in, in, you know, in a Christian environment. And, you know, just like it says in the word, you get trained up in the word and they go straight, but then they come back. And that's exactly how it happened with me. You know, that's and, right. Um, my parents dedicated me while I was still in the womb. My father knew my name years before I was ever even thought of. God gave him my name, Asa Josiah. And, um, and I, you know, it's like my whole life, looking back, I've seen God's hand on my whole life through all my struggles, through all my problems, you know, and through everything that I've gone through when I, when I was in the midst of my situation. I'm like, man, I'm on my own. It can't get no worse, you know, and I got to do this on my own. But then, the, and, 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 you know, that's part of where the song comes from. It's like, I can't do this on my own. You know, now that I look back and I'm like, wait a minute, man, you know what? I never have been doing this on my own. You know, I may, I may have thought I was, but that's just because I wasn't looking at, looking at who was around me. You know what I'm saying? And looking who got the situations. Yeah. And, but you know, I was a rebellious pastor's kid. And so I tried to do the most that I could do to get away from God thinking I could run from him, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And through that, you know, through that, it led me into addiction. It led me, you know, I remember, I remember at nine years old, I was, I was asked what I wanted to be when I grew up. Uh -huh. and, and this is crazy, but at nine years old, I was like, I want to be in a band, work part-time at McDonald's and be a heroin addict. That was my dream as a nine-year-old child, you know, oh, and it was like, yeah. you know, obviously that's the enemy, you know, implanting himself in my life. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what I idolized. And so growing up, I'm listening to, to Nirvana and listening to all these, you know, Alice in Chains and all these bands that, that that's what they did, you know, until the day they died, they let it overtake them, was heroin addiction. And that's, that's really just where I set my sights. You know, I never thought I could be anything past that. Let me... And, um, let me let me ask, let me ask you this, and just kind of chime in on this, and keep your thought. Um, I'm a pastor. I have kids. They're considered to be PKs, right? Um, and it seems like there's a stereotype out there, right? That right, most definitely are the worst kids. You know? <laughs> and and uh, and and I, I can remember. I, you know, I, we we work with our kids. Our kids are not perfect. None of our kids are. But I, I wonder, I don't know if this is true of you, because if you can have the best parents and you can have the most spiritual parents, but when, when they're in the house of a, the kids in the PK's house or, or their preacher kids, do, to be accepted by community, by community, do you feel like 
Okay, I don't want to be stereotyped as a goody two shoes, and 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 so therefore, I wanna I wanna I wanna have some street cred. I wanna have some. I don't want to be the ones that look like it, this super spiritual. It, does that have any bearing on going the other way? Well, I believe that plays a factor in it, but but the the way I feel about it, honestly, is when you're raised up in the word and you're raised up in truth then the enemy has to try that much harder because it's not just manipulate the young mind that doesn't know any better. You mm -hmm. know, and you delete, no, at this point, he says, no, I have to take on a full attack on these on these children. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. because they know the truth. They know better. So I've got to not only pervert their mind and distort their thoughts and, and their image of who they are because they are set apart. Yeah. You know? yeah. They are set apart. And, 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 and at that point, you know, we're, we we don't under, as when I was growing up, I know for me personally, I didn't understand how or why I wasn't accepted, you know, but, you know, I, I didn't understand that I was set apart for God. I didn't understand that I was raised up in truth and therefore, you know, the light doesn't mesh with the dark. And so it was like there was always this little like uh, uh, just why can't I fit in? Why doesn't why doesn't people accept me for who I am? So, like, yeah, I would go harder. You know, I would always, you know, uh, right. I fit to show you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. It develops, you know, it does develop. But, that, you know, I believe that's, that's Satan's plan, point blank, period. It's, you know what I'm saying? If he, if he can distort the, the children when they're young and, and, and push them as far as he can away from, from, from truth, you know, mm -hmm. because them children may have an impact that's, that's far greater then you know you know you see what I'm saying. Them children are always raised up in truth, so they're already speaking against what's wrong. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And, well, the Bible says wherever there's good, evil is present. Right. And if you whether you are under a, a PK home or whatever, if your parents are raising you up right, the devil gonna wants to come kill, steal, and destroy. Wherever there's good, evil is present. Okay. That's right. Wow. Wow. So, uh, yeah. So, so you, you now, you out there making a name for yourself. You, you want to be, you, you, you said you want to be these things that look like it's pretty awkward to want to be, or just kind of different ambition there. What, go, go back from there and then take us where you want us to go. Okay. So I, so I grew up with the ambition of, I was just, you know what I'm saying? Going to go as hard as I could. And 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 I remember whenever I reached, you know, I by the time I was 17, I was already addicted to pills and couldn't go to high school without having a pill first thing in the morning. I needed that. You know, I, if, I, if I didn't have that, I was sick. And uh, and it's it just developed into uh, before I knew it, I didn't realize the change that came along with, you know, these drugs that I was doing. I didn't realize how much I was binding myself up more and more the further I went along until I wake up sick and I'm like man, this is not where it's at. You know, this is not where it's at. Yeah. You know what I, do? I go harder. You know, I was like, pills ain't like, let's do hand going. You know, let's, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, man, the sorrow and the despair that comes from that and just whenever you're in the midst of a heroin addiction, there is no hope. No hope. You don't see a future. You don't see tomorrow. The only thing you see is not being sick. You know? And mm -hmm. um, and you'll do anything to get that fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that my mentality through that through that era of my life was, I'm never going to see 30. So I might as you know what I'm saying? So what I do today is not going to matter in long term because there is no long term. Mm -hmm. That was the mindset. So, you know, whenever, whenever you're living in that, much despair and, and that lack of hope, that void, it's like literally living, living in hell, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, it's for me anyway, that was my personal hell. And, um, I let it take me down a dark road. And, but I mean, you know what, that's the thing about God though, is he's able to use these experiences. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like he's able to use these experiences to show you, look, he's going to let you get to the bottom and get your feel of it just as much as you want. You know what I'm saying? He's like, you want to go to the bottom, you want to get your feel, do it because you know what, at the end of it, there ain't nowhere to go but up. That's right. 
And so, if, if the enemy tried to destroy me, where God's turned around and He's used for my good, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. so, I, so, I'm sorry. No, no, I, I feel you 100, percent man. God can turn it around. Uh, he'll use it for your good. Tell me, tell me, um, what happened? What are some of the things that when you were going through this spiral? And going down, what are some of the things that took place in your life that ended up causing you to go through some, some pain in your life? Well, I know, I know that uh, the mother of my child, she left me, which I have several children now. But the mother of my child at the, at the time, she had left me. Uh, my parents had moved down to Georgia. I was living in Ohio, and my parents had moved down to Georgia. And uh, at the time, see, I had had I, I, me and my buddy we had started a um at 17 we had started i was 17 he was about 23 but we had started a computer business and turned into a cell phone business and that turned into two cell phone business and before you know it like we ended up starting a little mini corporation mm -hmm. we had 14 stores but i mean uh, although i've seen success i was i was dying i was fueling it you know, I was feeling my drug addiction with this success. It was like the more money I got, the more drugs I could get. You know, and and um, and <laughs> I didn't see the value of what I had. Mm, yeah. Only, you know, only thing I seen was the value of you know the drugs I was on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I let that be to, to to a downward spiral to the point where I lost my business. I you know we went from having fourteen stores. <laughs> to having two to having one to not being able to i remember we wasn't able to pay the employees you know they had worked all week long and on payday we're not answering the phone because we ain't got no money for them mm. you know, that was the point where we where we closed the doors but uh uh i remember i had my buddy working for me and he was trying to help me climb up out of this hole and he was up there working the store and uh he was, he was my best friend one of my best friends and uh I remember he was calling me on payday and I wouldn't answer the phone. You know, hmm. and like that, that it was just a pit in my stomach. It's like, man, I, I will ex anybody out for these drugs, you know? Like, and this man's trying to support his family. He's got, he's got a newborn baby and a wife and a house payment. And I'm not answering the phone because I can't right. pay. I don't know what to tell him, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of pain. <laughs> you, you had a question? Uh, you had some thoughts? CJ. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I was just wondering, Aza, what, what, so what kind of got, like, what kind of got you to the point where you, you know, you feel like you needed these drugs and needed all these different vices? Like, was there a certain time or a certain specific experience or moment or trauma that triggered that, or was it just out of boredom, or what kind of, what kind of drugs? I think it was just implanted in me from a young age through the music that I listened to. You know, and I I got to a point where if mom and dad wasn't home, you know, then I would get on the internet and, you know, I would download certain songs and listen to certain music. And my sister was going through a phase where she was in this, like, grunge, grunge Nirvana type, you know what I'm saying? Like, like uh, Sublime, stuff like that. She was listening to just uh, a music that I never really heard, but, like, and I, I idolized her and her friends, so it was like, when I heard that music, it was something new, you know, and it was so different from everything that I was raised up on. You know, I was raised up on truth, and then I'm hearing all this, and I'm like, oh, well, this must be the real truth. You know, this is what the world's really like out there. Yeah. And it's sad because it is what the world's really like out there, but it's by no means truth. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I guess it's truth of just how bad your life can get, you know, if you want to if you want to fall down in that hole and live there. You know, that's, yeah, it can, it, I guess it is real, mm -hmm. but you know, that doesn't mean that it's true. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, there's big, there's big T truth and little T truth, right? right. Uh, and we got big T truth. And oftentimes yeah, I tell my kids, uh, they're not kids now, they're young adults. I tell them there's one assignment of the world, and that is to snatch every ounce of Jesus out of you. That's the assignment of the world. Now you can let them uh, snatch, snatch the, you know, the Jesus out of you, or you can hold on to the Jesus in you and and go after the world and try to get more Jesus in people. You're gonna be the receiver of it, or you're going to go and make things happen. Uh, and so uh, I, I can tell you, I know it, man. The world is very attractive. 
the world is very attractive. Would you say the devil goes and try to give us room service to serve him, and and he will he will put the lights, the action. I mean, he will make it looks look like it is the truth, the big T truth, but he's really the little T truth because it's covered with a lie. Uh, and a lie is under there. Mm -hmm. Sin's fun for a time frame, you know what I mean? Sin is great for a time frame. And Bible says, you know, and then the devil he starts playing mind games with you, kind of, kind of, you know, before you know it, you realize, oh man, I've been tricked, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, so now you, you, you know, you had a place now, man. You're out there. You're experimenting. You're in the world. You're doing this thing, man, and it feels good. And, and all of this, you, you own the drugs. You're having a party. Your businesses went down. I think that was very impressive for the first place to have fourteen. You said you had fourteen. 14 no <laughs> we had real potential. We had real potential. For yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. And then was it you said it was the drugs that that got it going down or it was just the economy? What what actually caused the business to, to start crashing? It was it was a little bit of both. So we were selling US cellular and um like I said, we started out with one store. We was a computer store and we did house calls. We was the first one before Geek Squad and all that. We was the first ones in our in our community that was doing house calls. And uh, we was working on like our teachers' computers and stuff like that. You know, we're still in high school, working on our teachers' computers and things like that. Just pulling up and doing service calls, and uh, and it just got big really quick. And before you know, you know, we're working out of his basement. Before you know it, it turns into we need a store, and we need a storefront. So we we buy we we bring a little store. And uh, a guy I'll never forget him. Uh, his name is Marvin Prevost. He walked into the store one day, and uh, he was like. You guys should sell pagers, you know. <laughs> this is back when pagers were still around. I'll tell you how, how long ago this was. <laughs> uh, he's like, you guys should sell pagers. It was like mm, maybe, you know. He's like, he's like, let me set you up an authorized dealer as an authorized dealer. He said, we'll set you up selling pagers and cell phones, and uh, just see where you can take it. Right. Uh, six months later, we're out selling his author all the all, all the U.S. cellular authorized deal or all the U.S. cellular company owned stores. We're out selling them, and so the these kids are on fire, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. pagers. Did you say pager? pagers? Pagers, pagers, and, pagers, and the old dinosaurs. <laughs> pager, that, that was uh, on the pager, man. We we no cell phone pagers, man. You stop at the you stop at the the booth and you get on the telephone trying to answer your pager. How do you do it? Uh, you know, you have to tell me if you don't want to, but that's. That's, that's back in my day, boy. That's old school time. I was trying to say, I mean, I was 17 when we was doing all this. You know what I'm saying? So, so. Yeah. Wow. So, CJ don't know nothing about the pay. CJ. I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's it's, it's CJ's birthday, but he don't know nothing about no. How old are you, 31 now, CJ? 31? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I got to plug the phone in. My bad, guys. Yeah, they, okay. they had the they had the the what's that the Nakota Nakota cell phones. When I was a kid, we already had cell phones coming up. They were you know they were. <laughs> we, we had dial up internet and cell phones by the time I was a kid. So. Wow, <laughs> we got Mr. Ace on. He is sharing his story with us. Uh, some of you coming on, uh, Mr. Ace is an artist. Of the Most High, as they uh, put on, uh, did a did a little deal with uh, even CJ. Uh, we played a little bit, and we're gonna play a little bit at the end too. Uh, but I want to just welcome everybody that's coming on here. We bless y'all. Uh, y'all keep chatting out there. We're gonna give Nelson out there, Ronson, shout out. Uh, uh, we got uh, Beverly out there. We're gonna give you a shout out for sure. How you doing? We got uh, Kate, Katie Lynn. You know Katie Lynn? Anybody know Katie Lynn? Over there? Katie yeah, so that's, that's my aunt. Yes, yeah, my aunt. <laughs> hey, all right. All right. Welcome, welcome. Uh, and uh, we appreciate your presence. We got Lawrence out there, Coach Lawrence. He is coaching uh, guys in the prison, uh, in prisons that we do uh, uh, a pilot program. No longer a pilot program. It's actually a program where we're coaching guys on the inside. 
and coaching them on the outside and connecting them to resources. We got Willie was in the house, Willie in the house. Willie, Willie got a lot of rapping experience himself as well. And he hung out with some of the big giants in the rapping game as well. Uh, we bless you, brother. Thank you for coming. In fact, they're doing it real good. We had a California somewhere. They got, they're doing it big over there, real big. Uh, uh, we got uh, also, we got Mr. Hines here. Uh, and we got my auntie, my most beautiful auntie, Joyce Bannon. What's good? I love you, mate. Uh, we got uh, also Jessica. Thank you. Thank you guys for chatting. If you guys are hanging back and not chatting, we don't need that now. So you got to keep chatting with us. And we got others that are coming on. God bless you. Bless yes, you, bless I think, I think Ms. Jessica, is that, is that your wife, uh, Asa? Beth is right there. <laughs> uh, hey, baby, I'll tell you. <laughs> That's your better half? What? That's my wife. All right. Support. That's awesome. We appreciate you uh, coming on and allowing us to have Asa. Look, I bet he taking the credit for all the decoration back there, but I bet that was your doing back there. Oh, no. <laughs> I, call I have no attention to detail back there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, Asa, yes, come sir. On, man, tell us now. You didn't. All right, you you obviously been to jail. You've been to been to prison. You've been to prison or jail? Both. You've been to prison I'm for sure. Been to multiple times. <laughs> yeah. All right. So tell us, you know, you, you're in prison. You're getting ready to come out. Tell me that, that paradigm shift that you had, right? I don't know if that happened in prison. Where did you have that shift around where I want to get out of this drug world? I want to get into, you know, the divine world. When did that happen for you? And how okay. did it happen? I want to tell it. I had to backtrack just a little. Okay. So, uh, I, sp I spoke about, you know, when I, when I was early in life, you know, my teenage years. And uh, uh, let's fast forward about 10 years or so. Uh, I, you know, I'm the, my whole life I've been into art. You know, I've always been into art and music. And uh, so, you know, I've drawn my whole life, painted um, and tattooed. And so I, I got to a point with my tattooing where uh, it just... I really took up an interest in it. You know, I love creating. And now I know it's because my father's a creator. You know what I'm saying? And, and so, therefore, I, I am like my father. I, you know, I ha I'm not, I'm at my happiest whenever, whenever I'm creating something, whether it be a nice haircut or whether it be a, an awesome tattoo or whether it be some music or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that's just what I was built to do. And um, so, yes, I, I get into the tattoo industry and, um, uh it doesn't take long and uh i end up with my own shop you know and uh i probably opened like i don't know i was open about six to eight months and became the number one shop in my town and mm. uh, within a year we're the number one shop on google in our region and it was just and then and then uh we're getting entered into Ink Magazine and things like that, you know, and it's just like, it was all this incredible stuff. And, uh, and, but I was doing it with, by my own will, you know, I was, I was, I was, I didn't recognize that my father's hand was at work in that and he was blessing mm -hmm. me. You know what I'm saying? I didn't recognize that. It was just, no, this is me doing this. And so, you know, I'm proud and puffed up and look at me, look what I can do, you know, type deal. So, uh, I believe he had to knock me on my head one time because uh, although I was doing all these great things in the world, I was still struggling in my personal life with my addiction, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it had moved past heroin. It, you know, I, I gave that up years ago, uh, and it, but it, it moved into uh, methamphetamines, you know, and like, it was like, I was like, yeah, I need this so that I can, you know, so that I, I tattoo better when I'm high, you know, and that was a lie, you know, that was a lie. I tattoo way worse when I'm high, you know? but like for me, it was that, that was that was my that was my excuse to keep going. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I was already on probation. Drugs had taken me down the path where I'd gotten locked up over and over and over again. Went to prison several times and got out. And um, so uh, I'm struggling with my addiction, and I get jammed up with a drug test for probation, and they put me in a they put me in a substance abuse class. 
and I'm going and I'm trying to fake it until I make it, you know. And uh, I'm and, and I finally kind of get a little bit of leeway after a bunch of times messing up, and they were patient with me because I had my shot, you know, because they had seen how far I had come. Because there was a point where I was literally in the streets, literally living in the streets, selling drugs, doing just just doing whatever I could to maintain and get by. Mm -hmm. And and they had seen me come from that to a respected business owner who was a pillar in the community who was excelling in in his field and what he was doing and they saw the fruits of my labor so mm -hmm. they were patient with me and they gave me chance after chance after chance mm -hmm. but it, it, you know it, it it finally got to a point it was like one more time one more time and it's over with for you you know and mm -hmm. i was like mm -hmm. i was like all right so i kind of took them seriously Cause I knew I was, I knew I was like they ain't gave nobody this many chances, but they gave it to me. So they, you know, what I'm saying, and, and they told me it was because of how far I'd come. You know, they didn't want to take that away from me. Mm -hmm. For anybody who says that the system is not for you, that's not always the case. You know, they're not for mm -hmm. you whenever you're not living right or you're not trying and you're not excelling. Yeah, they're you're right. They're not always for you then. You know, because they see the path of destruction that you're on. Mm -hmm. But when they see you on a path to doing something good, you know, and beneficial to not only you but others around you, then yeah, they're they're way more likely to be on your team. That's right. And um, so he said one more time, and it's over with. So I took him seriously. I got clean for real. You know, it, it wasn't pretend this time. It wasn't oh, I just get high on the weekends or no. It was I got clean, and uh, I had been clean almost a month. My father ended up passing away. He got sick. Went to the hospital, passed. And, and, it's hard to hear about that. Yeah, it, I mean, he's in a better place. You know, I'm, I'm ready to go be with him one day. <laughs> I, yeah. I wish I could be where he is, but back then I didn't have that outlook. I was, you know, I was just, it was, I was distraught and didn't understand, you know, didn't understand the things of God, didn't understand that this is just a step, you know, hmm. this whole thing is just one step to the next, you know. Yeah. And um, so. So I, I used that, you know, and, and I wasn't really prepared. Like I was really fresh into my recovery and I wasn't pre prepared to handle something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, so I, I slipped into my addiction and yeah. okay. it was only a time I knew I had to go back up there and see these folks. And I remember the day before I went, I was already dreading it. And, uh, I'm, I'm high as a kite, you know? And, uh, I walk into my mama's house and sit down on the couch and they're watching a movie called The Shack. And for those who ain't seen The Shack, it's about a guy who's, whose daughter gets murdered and he has an experience for God for the weekend, God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. And he had a real life encounter with him. And I was just like, man, what I wouldn't give to have something like that. You know, mm -hmm. that's awesome. You know, like yeah. if I did something like that, then, you know, I know God, you know, I would know God's real and I wouldn't have you know, like I just it, for some reason it just I just really envied this man McKenzie, who was who was, you know, the lead character. Well, the next day, I have to go and see probation. Mm -hmm. But me and my mom go up there, and uh, as we're sitting at the little picnic tables in front of probation, we're waiting on the probation officer to call, come out. My mom's like, "Let's pray," and so we prayed. And as we're praying, you know, we pray for his will to be done not our own you know whatever it is we ask that you know it be his will and mm -hmm. it be for the strengthening of not only myself but of my family you know yeah and um man i tell you what <laughs> it did not go the way i wanted it to go you know whatever you know whenever we pray and we're like god <laughs> get us with your will really what we're thinking is god align with our will you know yeah and, <laughs> and, and whenever, I, yeah, especially whenever you're sinner and you're just and, and you need him at that moment you're like god work it out for me you know and then whenever he does and you're like oh well what happened to you you know and because i got logged up that day and i and, and i was just like i don't know i was just like god no you know please i thought you was gonna bail me out again you know and not realizing man you, he bailed me out a hundred times before you know and i and i i took those and I never learned from him. You know, it was time yeah. for me to really learn a real lesson. Well, that's, that's how he bails us out. Sometimes he, he don't let you get a bail. Right, because there's pain through the growth. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> or there's, or there's growth through the pain, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it takes these hard situations to really grow as an individual. And uh, without 
without this last prison trip, I would not be the man I was without losing everything that I had built over the years and uh, leaving my mom and my wife out there. My mom just freshly losing her husband weeks before and, and my wife, you know, I'm sorry, my mom loses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying it right. <laughs> but, um, you know, and then, and then my wife losing her sole supporter and my children losing their sole supporter, you know, but it was through that. It was through what, like just losing everything that I built and, and putting my family through all of this pain that God was able to step in, you know, mm -hmm. and not only does he got me, but he's got them too. You know, that's, that's and, right. and so he took the next two years to develop me into the man that you see today, you know, right. and he put his words in me that so that I can not only strengthen others and spread the, spread his 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 news and, and the things that he does. Because, I mean, man, listen, if I just sit back and tell you all the things that he's done for me, it's ridiculous, you know. <laughs> and I'm about Jay, you know, what I'm saying? like I ain't nothing but a Jay. So for him to do that to me, you know, what I'm saying? it's like. Wow, this dude is cool, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. I mean, you know, and it ended up though. I, I went to jail that day, and um, when I got there, I just had this peace about me, you know. Mm -hmm. I just knew that it, he was gonna he was gonna have me this time. And I tell you what, whenever I look back, man, it's just I see I, it's mm -hmm. it's overwhelming to know just how much he'll do for the ones that he loves you know and how much he his he knows so much better than what we know of what we need you know what i mean absolutely and so yeah. um so i'm praying one night and i'm like god send me somebody to strengthen me you know because as iron sharpens iron one man sharpens the other and i knew that i was you know i knew i had faith i knew i was raised in the word but i'd been out of it for so long you know since i was a child i'd been you know i'd been absent from it and mm -hmm. so I, I didn't i couldn't really understand and grasp i was reading the bible and i was just i was seeking his face and i was like lord send me somebody to help me learn this you know mm -hmm. and um Man, when I tell you I had a real life shack experience, I did. You know what I'm saying? Just like that man spent three days, you know, with with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Man, uh -huh. I I had the same experience. You know, and for me it was so surreal. You know, because the whole time, like, okay, so so I pray for the for God to send me somebody. You know, the mm -hmm. next morning I'm cleaning up my cell, and there's this guy sitting on the table, and he's facing the TV. All I see is his back. You know, all I see is his back. Mm -hmm. He's facing the TV and the guard comes in. She's like, hey, Ace, so when you get done with that mop, will you put it out here in the vestibule? I was like, yeah, sure. And uh, when she said my name, he turns around and he looks at me with these piercing eyes, you know, and just with this, like, he has this recognition on his face. He's like, like, he knows me. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been this man before in my life. And, okay, God uses people. I don't, and I believe we can all attest to that. God will use his children, Okay. And he knows just what each one needs at that moment. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I needed a man who visually looks like Jesus to come spend some time with me, who's filled with the Holy Ghost. And this is what this man looked like. He looked like Jesus to the point where I thought I was standing next to the Messiah at times, you know. And, yeah. um, and it was crazy because he was a master carpenter. Uh, he... he <laughs> <laughs> the list went on, but he was a master carpenter. He uh, had he knew the word to a point where it was like he lived it. You know, it was I never had I never met somebody with such an in depth understanding of the Bible to the point where man, like I was really questioning my sanity and questioning, did this is this Jesus right here in front of me? You know, and like he never once made a claim of being God or anything like that. It was just his walk. You know, it was he and and and. Later on in my life, that I was, you know, he that what he was doing was just he was exhibiting the characteristics of Christ because the more that we grow in him, the more that he grows in us. And before we know it, we're producing his fruits. You see right. what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's this guy. But for a baby believer, I'm thinking I'm seeing Jesus. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's what I needed. You know what I'm saying? That's what I needed. And, yeah. uh, and it, it moved on to a point, you know, he ends up going home and stuff. And so, but, but he was there for that first initial, you know, for that first initial walk, that first initial boost for me to be like, okay, I'm all in God. 
I am all the way in, you know? Yeah. And, and awesome. I moved. Around. Oh, it was crazy, dude. <laughs> it, was, oh, it was cool. That, that is so good. That's so awesome, man. Uh, that, that Jesus was send people that we can identify with, right? And that we can relate to. Um, I don't know if he had tattoos or didn't have tattoos, but he did have a life that he lived in front of you, right? And uh, that, that brought you in. So that brought you in. You start, you know, really uh, now, this was this in when you were in prison? Uh, First went into jail before I ended up getting sentenced and stuff. Yeah, this is okay. Okay. How much time did you end up doing? I ended up doing two years. Two years. You yeah. didn't say it earlier. Like Joseph, right? Years. Yeah, just a person, man. <laughs> In two years, he sharpened me, though. He sharpened me. He developed me into a creature I never thought I could be. Mm. Well, <laughs> and, and so now you're doing you're doing music. We got got about ten minutes left on the show. Um, Pastor, yeah. can, can I just can I ask one sure. question real quick? Sure, please. So, can you just tell us a little bit about how you met Ronson? Like, what? How, how's Ronson <laughs> coming to play? <laughs> Uh, I met Ronson in jail, and uh, that's my boy, man. Uh, he was my bunkmate, and uh, I love him to death now. But I tell you what, whenever I first met him, he used to drive me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I love him now, but when I met him, he was not a spiritual believer by no means. No, you know what I'm saying? Like he, I mean, he may have been, but he didn't exhibit it. Neither did I, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, it was crazy because I hadn't heard from him. In several years, you know, I had heard nothing more about Ronson, but God put it on my heart when I came home to get a hold of Ronson. Mm. And so I did, you know, I'm going to follow you, you. You put the bed out there. I'm going to follow it. You know what I'm saying? I'm chasing whatever you, whatever he puts down, I'm picking up, you know, yeah. so he put it there. So I'm like, okay, I will. So I hit Ronson up and Ronson's like, uh, you know, Ronson tells me that he's in this faith-based rehab and he's doing good and he's training to be a life coach and he's you know what I'm saying all these all these steps and I was like who are you you know like <laughs> I was like I understand why God put put us in, in each other's path I said because man like you are super on your walk and you're just as devoted to it as as I am mine and I, I you know what I'm saying your spirit's bearing witness with my spirit right now because I you know what I'm saying like when the Holy Spirit lives in somebody and you're a spirit filled believer. You recognize that spirit, and that's what I recognized in Ronson that day. And I was just like, man, you know, what I'm saying this is awesome. So I was like, well, check out what God's been doing in my life. You know, and so I, I hit him some I hit him some songs, and he was like, holy cow, bro. He's like, I didn't know you had that in you. I said, me neither. <laughs> I was like, it's just what God been doing it with me. You know, because I I went from a point where I was writing, you know, all secular songs and songs about gang banging and drug dealing and this and that. You know, so God stopped me and he said, listen, if you're going to be my child, then why don't you make your music about me? You know, like stop making this music for the world and, and start doing the will that I have set for you. And I was like, mm. and I've tried out and I, you know, what I'm saying? and now like looking back, people that know me from my, from my old life, they're like, dude, your songs now are so much better. You know? <laughs> they're like, it's ridiculous. So, yeah. But yeah, Ron, so Ronson put me in touch with CJ, and, and long story short, here I am. So, <laughs> uh, you know, hey man, Ronson is Coach Ronson now. We we got okay. it's Coach Ronson. Yeah, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, CJ, you had another question? You good? Yeah. So, so what are we? Uh, so what's kind of what's the goal now, man? I know we've talked a little bit offline about it, but. What, where, where do you see yourself going now that guys, you know, put you in his hand in this, in this season? What's, well, what's I think for, for this season, he's he's just he, – he's put a message in my heart, you know, that, that I feel that I need to get to as many people as I can. And uh, the enemy uses the platform of music to really destroy the world, and that's how I was attacked initially as a child, you know. I, it came through music and through familiar – you know, through, through the familiar spirits and, and just through – you know, it has a way of grasping people, and mm. God's really placed it on my heart to, to to combat that, you know, and combat that with Him behind me. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's really my path right now. Of course, it's you know, of course, being an artist and being a tat, you know, I'm a I'm a phenomenal tat. Well, I'm I'm a good tattoo artist. People like me, <laughs> uh, you know. So like. Uh, uh, of course, I'm going to create and, and do art and and get my shop back going and things like that. But 
for now, uh, you know, he's put this music in front of me, and I feel like I just got to get that out there in any way, shape, and form. You know, like I, he, like I said, he he put it down, so I'm gonna pick it up. You know, that's where I'm at. Oh man, what a testimony, uh, man! We really appreciate you sharing that with us. And uh, anything else that you might want to share, or say this would be a good time to to say that. And and uh, and and if you got something you want to say to the audience, if anybody that that you know about your life, take take about a minute to do that. We got about five minutes left, and I'm gonna I'm gonna close us out with some thoughts. All right. I mean, I know for anybody who's struggling and anybody who's going through addiction or going through, you know, the weight of bad decisions, mm -hmm. don't run from it. Embrace it. Embrace what God's trying to do for you, you know, because he, you may have found yourself in that position, but you're not alone. You know, you are not alone and he will see you through and he he will not only take all of these things that you feel are destroying you. He'll take them and he'll turn them around to the point where he'll build you up so high. It's mm -hmm. like I call it a spiritual slingshot. You know, you might get set back for a minute. You might get drawn back for a minute. But whenever he lets go, he's going to launch you into into the future faster than you could ever even realize. Come on, <laughs> man, that's a snippet of great truth. And, uh, man, I, I appreciate you. I, I, I want to just, you know, uh, those that come on this, this show, uh, what makes the show is the testimonies and the things that we learn from your life. And, uh, and, I, and I always take notes. I learn from the people who come on this show and that, that's, that's brave enough to share, uh, be transparent and open up, you know, Jesus uh, when he was doubt, had the doubting Thomas is out there, right? What he did, he showed the scars in his hand, and he said, "Doubting Thomas, put your hand there, and then, and the hole in his side." And and it was that that caused the doubting Thomas to believe. That's right. We can, we got to show our scars. We got, and, and this is what I, I've learned from you that you shared some scars here. You just you said your problems. God can give you problems and God can turn problems around and he can use your pain and he also can use people. And, uh, and so you came from a, a great background, a Christian home, you know, um, and, and parents have put that in you, the seed in you, right? They put the seed in you of truth. And, and the Bible says, you might go away for a minute, train up a child in the way they should go, but you may go away, but you can always come back to that seed. And uh, here you are today, my brother, back in the seed, going to your co-creation with Christ, you know, being able to use your creativity, you know, in music and art and tattoos. By the way, my, here's a footnote for you. Don't you know Jesus had tattoos? That's you know? right. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is that? Oh, this guy, King of Kings, yeah. King of Kings, Lord of Lords. I, I shared that. I shared that the other day too with uh, Waze as we were talking about it. Yes, yeah. yes, and I'm telling you, people, religious people, have a tendency to get distracted about religious stuff, mm -hmm. but they can't. They sometimes because they cannot connect in the spirit, they don't see the spirit of things. That's right. And ultimately, it's you know we got. I was talking to my wife today. I was thinking about it, and we're getting real close to the end. I was talking to my wife about uh, the analogy of water related to the spirit and how much water we have in this earth. It's made up of most of the water. Your body is made up of water. Right. And water just goes around rocks. You, know, you can't stop water. water. Water is powerful. That's like the Holy Spirit, right? The, the Holy Spirit. It's like a, 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 a you know a, a water coming out of our belly, like a river flowing uh, out of our bellies, you know. And so he's the, he, he, he's a quencher. He quenches you, you know. The whole thing is like the thirst of that we get thirsty, but the Holy Spirit kind of quenches that thirst. And uh, and so I believe that's what happened in your life. I really believe that you knew the truth. And you might have ran from it. From you came back, you came back to the truth. It's, 
and then, and then now you got more joy. Yeah, I can see it all for you, brother. You got more joy than ever. I, I didn't know you then, but I'm glad I know you now. And, <laughs> and the joy of the Lord is your strength. You're right. right. You're so Bronson, right. Bronson has that same kind of joy. He came into our reentry home from the inside. He was in the inside and he came into our re reentry home called Vital Signs. And this brother was focused. He's like, I want that coaching thing. I want, I want to do something different with my life. And he just, he came to the prayer line and you know, he just started working it out. And then he started coach on a regular basis. Here's one of his coaches right here. Uh, CJ have coached him and is coaching him as well. The power of coaching is, is, is so good, man. And so, about it. <laughs> yes, and, and listen, man, some of the best coaches are those, uh, you know, that have been through the process. Uh, right. through some pain situation right and so we just thank God that you came here and shared your story and we are blessed because of it and you and, you, and I'm going to play a little of your music at the end like I promised uh, and I'll play a little bit of that music at the end CJ before we co close out what you got what, you got something on your spirit that yeah. you Hey. Just, just want to thank my brother for being transparent tonight, man. It looks like a lot, you know, a lot of people were touched by your testimony tonight. And um, mm -hmm. just want to shout out uh, Daniel Robertson. I don't know if you know my man Daniel. He's, yeah. he's tuned in tonight. And do, do you know um, a, a Julie, a Miss Julie? That'd be my mother. <laughs> it's your mother, right? Yep. Shout right. out Miss Julie. Yeah, she's tuned in as well. Awesome. Wow. Well, you know what? I know, like Russell's mother, she. I know your mother is just as proud uh, of you, and uh, you know um, we thank we thank God for those mothers that keep praying for us and keep believing that we will we will make it. And so, thank God for the audience here tonight. We appreciate your presence. Thank you for coming and being a part of Tack of the Shackles. Um, we're gonna play a little bit of Ace's music, and also CJ was a part of giving the beats to that or someone that CJ knows. I want y'all to check this out. God bless you, y'all. We're going to close out with music tonight. Because we're not religious, right? We don't have to close out with prayer. We close out with music tonight. <laughs> territory, shit about 57 me, so you know what it's called me, so the blind like Bruce Lee, running down on the devil, I ain't for the temple and chopping like raw me. got my brothers around, we no longer about making joyful sound, we covered by grace, only through faith, thank you God, in Jesus name, you took the pain, brought the life, put me in, now I'm ready to fight, you open my eyes, put your spirit within, Satan taking hells, all we do is we, I wore my sins, shit with a pin, so I'm feeling from him, catching our nets, got me fishing for men. Charge over me, let your Holy Spirit flow through me. Bring the rain as I plant your seeds. You see these streets, there ain't no rest. Believe in the lie that they're better off dead. Not check as a chest, Lord, focus my sights. Give me all these sons so we don't have to die. I'm ready to ride wherever I go, yo. By my side, I give you my life. You gave me yours, so I'ma give you mine. It's do or die, Lord, you and I. You pay the way, so I get this right. Walk by faith, fly by sight. Show me your strength, I'm in this fight. <laughs> So I walk by faith and not by sight. You pay the way so I don't have to die. Walk by faith. No, if this is Tack of the Shackles, out for life streaming live podcast. This is your host, 
of the most high God, Lee Robbins. And we got my co-host, CJ. God bless you. Have a great evening.